Hi, everybody. I'm Scott Fogo. I'm, this is my 11th year as the high school principal. I'm really happy to be here tonight. I love this school. Um, I'd be remiss to start, even though it's academics night, I'd be remiss to not talk to you about what really makes our school great. Um, the number one thing is that we really love kids. And when I hire teachers, I've hired every teacher for the last 11 years. If I don't have a feeling that they love kids, if they don't answer the questions correctly, we don't hire them. Because even great academics comes down to a commitment to kids. And so I'd be remiss to, 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 to leave that part out. The other thing is that we do passionately uh, love Jesus here. Um, and we want people to hear that gospel message of Jesus on the cross. And so those two things are the foundational elements of everything that we do here, um, even our academics. When I was an assistant principal at a, a really good school in California, my principal called me in and said, Scott, I need you to figure out how we really get kids in the college. And so I really went exploring. I had a chance to talk to people in UCLA engineering and uh, UCI biomed. I talked to people at Stanford and I was really trying to figure out how do we help kids get into college? And what I found out led me to, to start a STEM program at that school. Quickly after that, I was invited here to be the principal and now we have eight of those same type of academies in different subject uh, uh, areas, including the Conservatory of the Fine Arts. Our academic program here is set up to help you get into college, help kids get into college, and help them be prepared for the admissions process. I have a really important question to ask you, and the question is, how do you think your kids get into selective colleges? How, how do you compete to get into college? And the answer is a weird one. The answer is a person on the other end is choosing. So when Willem here gets a 4.0, probably like a 4.6 grade point average, right? And he also has a great ACT score. I don't know what it is. Let's say it's a 34. Willem will be competing to get into the finest colleges in the country with a whole bunch of people with the same GPA and a whole bunch of people with the same test score. The, the reality is, is no matter if you have a perfect test score and perfect grades, there's thousands of people with that same thing. If you're a little underneath that, there's thousands of people there. If you're underneath that, thousands of people there. You are getting slotted in a little bit by the numbers, but there's other things that contribute. And the most important thing that you need to know tonight is there is a person on the other end that is choosing that. And so we've set up our school to make sure that your students are not only prepared for college, which is really important. These two that are sitting in front of you, they're ready to go and they'll dominate college. They're ready. But the other thing is that they look good when they apply to college. Folks, you guys are choosing a high school for a whole bunch of different reasons. But when it comes to academics, there's two basic things you want. You want your kids to be able to do well in college and you want them to get into a college that they qualify for, right? Uh, in that conversation, when I went out exploring that, the Stanford undergraduate admissions counselor basically told me, well, we denied 600 valedictorians last year. Like what? They're almost proud of denying valedictorians is because they're not just looking for the best grades and the best SAT scores. They're looking for kids that can handle the level of work that prove that they can handle the level of work and that are gonna come to their school and do something. So our academies are built and our college counseling is built to highlight things that are attractive to colleges like academic activities, like internships, like experiences with speakers. These kind of things that happen sometimes during the summer and sometimes after school combined with the right type of classes and good grades and classes is how you get into selective universities. Now, some of you are saying, hey, Mr. Fogo, I don't have a lot of interest in Harvard or, or the other really selective schools. My, my kid's a really good student, but he's not gonna go to those. Well, our school is set for you too. And so what we're gonna try to do is give you the experiences at both academic and extracurricular that help you build a resume that makes you an attractive candidate to wherever you're going to apply. I know this, I've had three kids go through, 
my, my, my two are seniors right now, then I have a junior in college and I'll brag for a minute, um, but he'll tell everybody he, he, he meets that Faith Lutheran prepared him for college. He's a junior and he has a 4.0. He still has not even gotten an A minus. And so he's doing really well. He's a pre-med major. He's taking organic chemistry, physics and biochemistry right now. And he has, he has A's in all of those. I do think that we prepare kids to do well in college but we also help kids look good when they apply. Because no matter what anybody tells you, you are competing with other people when you apply to college. We've set up our system to help you shine uh, during that. Now, if you heard me talk about anything other than academics, I think kids can have fun. I think they can be well-balanced. There are a lot of things for them to take part of here, but when it comes to academics, those are some key things. Let me hit really quickly what we believe um, uh, colleges are kind of looking at most when you go to apply. Uh, remember, they want people who are going to be involved in college. Why? Because the statistics say if a kid's involved in college, they're going to have a better experience and they're more likely to give when they graduate. And college, colleges are trying to raise money. They're trying to get as much money as they can out of you, unfortunately. Okay, so understand, they're going to look at your, your types of classes you're taking, and they're gonna look at your grades in those classes. That's why we offer over 20, I don't even know how many now, maybe 22, 23 AP classes, all right? We offer classes like honors molecular genetics and honors engineering. Uh, we offer the highest dance classes uh, they could offer in our conservatory. Um, we offer like trial advocacy. We offer a lot of specialty courses that look really good on a transcript, right? They, they tell a story about you. And so you want that admissions counselor to get excited when they're looking at your resume, they're looking at your transcripts, they're looking at your essay, and they want that all to paint a picture of somebody that's gonna be successful at their school and they're gonna be active at the school. And when you can do those two things, uh, you're gonna grab their attention and you're gonna go into their yes or their maybe pile. They're not gonna put you, if you're, if you're un, if you're uninteresting, you might go into the no pile. So you're fighting to get into that yes or maybe pile, right? And so if you're a student that gets a, you know, a 34 in their ACT and you have a 3.8 and you're competing against people with 4.0s, you might get in the maybe pile because you've done interesting things and they know you're gonna come and be active. Um, I don't know how personal you wanna get, but uh, my son, Micah, his, his ACT scores weren't really even up to the average ACT scores at Tulane. Very bright student, does well in school, but not a great test taker, right? And so, but he got into Tulane. And why? Well, Micah did a whole bunch of really cool things during high school. I think he was an attractive candidate. And so keep, keep that understanding that they are more and more every year looking at a holistic picture of a kid. Grades and stuff are, are, are important. ACT and SAT is less important than it's ever been, but it's still important for some of the selective colleges and for like scholarships. But your activities and your story and the type of things that happen during your high school years are becoming more and more important to college um, applications. Now listen, this is what we specialize in. This is how we've built our academic programs to make sure um, that our students their best characteristics, their activities, what they wanna do in college is wrapped up in a pretty package and given to a college at admissions time. It doesn't guarantee anything, right? Um, but it is important. I hope that helps. Um, I could go, I could talk for hours about our, our academic problem. They're all laughing because I know I could, I could go off here for an hour and just keep yakking. Um, I love it. I think it's brilliant. Uh, this year we had 191 courses the maximum a kid can take on campus during their four years is 32, but your kids get a choice of 191, like flight two and all like firefighting class. There's so many neat experiences kids can have here at the school. And I know that because my own kids have benefited from it. I hope you have a great night. I'll be kind of here to answer chat questions and that kind of thing. Um, but I'm really happy that you come. And I, and I do think um, that we, we really operate in a unique space in this country. And how do I know that? Because last week and then next week, we have schools from other states 
that are coming to visit our school to figure out what we're doing here. Um, and so this is not me just pretending. Um, the reality is, is we created something really unique uh, for our students here. So if I don't get to talk to you, have a great night. I can't wait to meet you and drop by any time. I'd love to talk to you or email me, call, whatever. Okay, have a good night. Hi, everyone. I'm Emily Blank, and I'm the Dean of our Academies here at Faith Lutheran. And I have two students with us here tonight to share their story and the things that are gonna make them stand out when they apply to college, like Mr. Fogo was just telling us about. So we have Willem and Roxy here, and I'm gonna have Willem go first. Willem, would you mind sharing with everybody a little bit about yourself and all of the things that you participate in here at Faith? Yes, thank you. Hi, um, my name is Willem Minyago, and I'm a junior here at Faith. I'm involved with the theater. I'm a theater performance major in the Faith Conservatory of the Fine Arts. And our production of Mamma Mia in January is going to be my 10th show here. I'm also a member of the Revelation Show Choir, which is headed to Hawaii in a month to, per to perform at the 80th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor. And so that's why shortly I'll be heading out for a rehearsal. I'm also a member of the STEM Academy and the Honors Institute. And I've been on the varsity swim team since my freshman year. Um, my decision to apply for the conservatory in the STEM Academy came from a building interest in theater and science throughout middle school. Throughout middle school, I did summer programs in science and I had done well in science classes. And so that helped me decide that I wanted to become more committed and more involved in high school and to deepen and expand my experience. So in terms of my favorite aspects of these programs, um, I love being around other engaged and driven students who are interested in the same things as me. So, but specifically to the STEM Academy, the required internship has been the highlight of my experience so far. I, this is a 90, 90 hour internship with a company or an organization or a university of our choice. And it's an opportunity to work, uh, to have real world experience with scientists and teach us how to communicate professionally. And so, a little bit of background about the internship that I've chosen. Um, my family has been going to South Carolina for over 20 years and growing up in the South Carolina area has been very special to, to my childhood and to my family. And paired with the uh, fact that I've done several trips throughout middle school that had an emphasis on coastal ecology, I was very fortunate when two summers ago, the opportunity arose to work under several professors and scientists from Clemson University who were studying coastal ecology in South Carolina. And the main problem that they're facing is that the sea levels are rising, which brings salt water into ecosystems that are not meant for high salinity levels. And so stands of trees like the cypress trees have experienced major damage because of the salt levels. So these scientists work to measure the diameter of the trees in multiple plots in the swamps of South Carolina every year. And so my job, um, my project has become a longitudinal internship that lasts for multiple years. And so during the summers, I go to South Carolina and I work in the field with my mentors, which involves collecting data waist deep in the swamps and collecting dozens of mosquito bites along the way. Um, but then after my work in the field during the summer, the work continues at home throughout the school year when I meet with my mentor several times a month and work on data entry and analysis. So last year, after finishing a round of analysis, I developed a professional scientific poster, which I've since presented at a local research symposium, as well as a graduate level research forum in South Carolina. And I'm looking forward to presenting again at the South Carolina Water Resource Meeting this summer. So the idea is that with more time and data, this research is going to be complete for publishing. And as this is a project that this group of researchers has wanted to publish for a long time. So that's my major project. Um, and then, in, Talking about the, the most challenging part of an academy or multiple academies is probably juggling schedules and the time management aspect of it. An academy is a major time commitment and it includes more and harder classwork than is, than is required at Faith. So I encourage people to only do it if you really like it and you're really interested in the subject matter. But to counter that, one of the best things about the academies is that your advisors help you with a roadmap of your classes at the beginning of your high school year. So you see, where you're going and how you're gonna progress. And that's been really helpful to me in the balance of it all. Um, and then a last couple of things, my future plans, I'm still exploring colleges. Most of them are on the East Coast. And I think that I'm going to 
study medicine or environmental science or environmental policy. That's kind of the direction I'm leaning towards right now. Um, and then I'm just gonna close with talking about the benefit of the academies. I think that the academies show commitment and passion like Dr. Mr. Fogo talked about with kind of your story when you're applying for, for college, but it's also a chance for real world experience now in semi-professional and professional environments that will give students good life experiences that are applied beyond high school. Um, and then for me personally, I followed my interests, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I want to be a coastal ecologist or a Broadway star. And I don't really believe that we all need to know our careers right now. So when I was applying for the academies, I felt like I was declaring that I was going to be a theater major in college or a lab scientist, but that's not what it means. High school is about exploring and discovering, and this is what these programs do. You know, they're here for deeper exploration deeper inquiry and discovery. So thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Willem. That was so much information. And um, Willem and I have talked a lot about balancing his classes and trying to get everything worked out, but I, I think it's going to all happen. huh? And so we're excited to have you and we thank you for your time, Willem. We know you have to go into rehearsal, but hey, real quick, can you remind us when Mama Mia is going up? Do you remember? January 21st. <laughs> January 21st. Okay. <laughs> and so people can get tickets on um, conservatory.com. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm really excited about Mama Mia. So, <laughs> so we want to share that. So um, we want to see if there's any, um, are there any questions for Willem before he has to head to rehearsal at all? Or is he okay to, to head out? Uh, it looks like he is okay at the moment. Parents, if you have uh, questions for Willem that you didn't get a chance to type into our question or Q&A box, you can go ahead and email those to admissions at flhsemail.org and we'll pass them on to Willem for you. Thank you so much for being here, even though you have rehearsal tonight, Willem. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> Bye. Have a great night. <laughs> Okay, and then we wanna transition over to Roxy. So Roxy's also a junior at Faith and we're so excited to have you with us tonight, Roxy. And so Roxy has um, some different things that she's been participating in compared to Willem. And so Roxy, why don't you tell us a little bit about the things that you do? All right, um, hi, my name's Roxy or Roxana. I'm also a junior here at Faith and I've been going here since the sixth grade. I'm pretty involved at Faith. I'm a part of two academies, which is the Justice and Advocacy Academy, which is the Law Academy here, and the Business and Entrepreneurship Academy, which is the Business Academy. I'm a part of staff for both of the extracurriculars that are associated with both of those academies, Model UN or Model United Nations and DECA, which is a business extracurricular. I'm also in the Honors Institute, Math Honor Society, and some various other clubs for Faith. I was able to decide on joining the Business Academy first, when I was picking out my academies as a freshman, because since I was very young, I always wanted to do business like my dad did. He owns dental offices and I wanted to go down the path of being a big business person like he was. And I actually decided it before I even joined high school because my sister who's an older sister who went to faith. She was joining the film academy here actually. And around the same time that the film academy opened up, the business academy opened up. And I was like, she wants to do that. I don't really want to do that but the Business Academy has this really cool sign that's right outside and I wanna do that one. So I had that straight in my mind. So I'd actually gone onto the Faith website, looked at the required class I needed to take freshman year, which was Foundations of Business. And I had just signed up then. So I was ready freshman year. And actually for the Law Academy or Jurisprudence or just in the Advocacy Academy, apologies. I only decided that like around two years ago because I had decided, I realized as I got older, I was more interested in the whole law and politics, political science side of things, and realized that I wanted to pursue that. Um, I've been in the Business Academy for two years and the JNA Academy for one. And I, I would say my favorite part of just being in an academy is just absolutely the opportunities and the experience you receive. The clubs that are required for you to be a part of those two academies, which is model you on a mock trial when you're in JNA specifically, they help tremendous amounts with public speaking and they overall just give you a new sense of confidence and when you're leading new groups of people or you're talking in large crowds or even talking one on one. They they are not necessarily just for JNA students. However, being in JNA is a sort of tight knit community that are extremely beneficial, especially for mock trial. 
And then DECA, which is for the Business Academy, it helps you with thinking critically and creatively under pressure and being able to present ideas in a confident way when you're speaking to someone who's more intimidating and speaking to someone who's in charge of you, which is just a general thing that you're always going to need in life, especially when you're giving inter interviews or anything like that. Along with that, another amazing and I would probably say my favorite part about the academies are the internships, as they bring so much new experience and realism to what you want to do when you're older. Unfortunately, my academy experience is nothing even remotely similar to what Willem has had because his is beyond amazing. Mine was more of a, my, mine was an idea hour internship that I took last summer. But the best part about doing an internship at Faith is that your academy supervisors, such as Mr. Connolly for business or Mrs. Hayes for JNA or Mrs. Blank, who's uh, who oversees STEM but oversees all the academies as well. They guide you through your way of finding an internship. You're not on your own for it. You have these mentors that you can look on, and they will guide you through the whole experience, and it's just incredible. For example, like, and the I would also say it's the most difficult part of being in the academies is because realistically, it's still an internship. For example, the business internship that I did last summer when I was a sophomore, it was 90 hours. As it was still a amazing experience and I enjoyed it I learned so many new things it was just that it's still hard work and there's some things that you're always going to struggle with doing that and there's also the time management of being in two academies I had to start my internship a year early as most students would do their internship their summer between their junior and senior year I did my first one between sophomore and junior year because it's incredibly hard to juggle two 90-hour internships within a two-month span so having that kind of time balance is super important but again, it's a beyond incredible experience. And my future plans at the moment are, for example, are just to go down the more law political path, path at this time. So the critical thinking skills and the, especially the confidence I'm learning in the public speaking side of DECA and Model UN are super important. And these academies are helping me and will continue to help me tremendous amounts along the way. Thanks, Roxy. It's exciting to hear what you're thinking maybe for the future. So. Um, uh, Mrs. Choi, do we happen to have any questions for Roxy? Um, at the moment, let me see here. Yes, um, it looks like, oh, it looks like it's just more of a general question. But parents, I'm going to give you one second to see here. Does anyone have any questions specifically for our student? Um, let's see here. Um, well, actually, Roxy, remind me, do you play a sport by any chance? I actually do not. I played soccer here in middle school, but I can answer the question pretty simply and say that yes, that being able to balance academies, and just academics and athletics is, is fairly easy. It's not something that's going to take too much time, especially even varsity athletes. I have friends that are varsity soccer players and varsity, many different sport players, and they're still in many academies. I know friends that are in two academies that are varsity players, so it's definitely possible. Definitely possible. And I'd say take some organization like Willem talked about, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for your uh, question, Jeffrey. All right. Um, Roxy, do you think there's anything else that you'd like to let parents know? Um, maybe that you think, you know, from a student perspective before we let you go for the night, or you, of course, you can stay logged on. <laughs> I would just say that from a student's perspective, like Willem said, it's not always set in stone. For example, business. Business is something that's going to affect you like long term. Like business is in every single sector of anything you want to do when you're older, whatever, jo whatever job you're going to do. So it's incredibly important to have that background, but that doesn't mean I'm going to be a business major in college. It's getting these experiences that are so beneficial, like doing two internships, working at a dental clinic and working on a law campaign are very different things, but they both provide me with different experiences. So it's very important to note that no matter what your kid goes into, whether they're, they're in STEM or the film academy, both will give them beneficial experiences, even if they end up not going into either of those careers. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Parents, thank you for submitting your questions to our Q&A. Um, we will continue to gather those questions. Um, I'm going to transition and see one more time if our video will work. And if it does, um, then we will play that. And then Mrs. Blank was uh, going to give us some more information about the academies specifically. Give me one moment here. All right. Let's see. How's the sound? Can I get a thumbs up if I if we can hear the sound? 
awesome. Faith Lutheran offers challenging and active coursework, including 36 honors courses and 21 AP courses. We also offer ACT and SAT preparation. Our recent ACT average score is 23.6 and SAT is 1220. Faith Lutheran's block schedule is unique in the Valley, as our students are able to take eight classes each semester. This is a huge advantage over schools that only offer six to seven per semester. All of our academic and service opportunities with our eight block schedule, endorsement and counseling programs, and unprecedented electives combine to give our students the advantage. We offer several endorsement programs which are like a school within a school. Our endorsement programs include the Honors Institute, Conservatory of the Fine Arts, Business and Entrepreneurship Academy, Christ Academy, Film and Broadcasting Academy, Flight Academy, Hospitality and Tourism Academy, Justice and Advocacy Academy, and the STEM Academy. Our academies allow our students to explore their passions through very specialized courses, amazing opportunities, all in the context of a Christian high school environment that has all of your typical activities and sports. Besides the specialized courses, the students in our academies compete nationally in activities in their fields as well as complete internships. We partner with over 60 local organizations and businesses to offer these to students. More information about our entrance and graduation requirements for these programs is on our website. At college admissions time, endorsements and internship hours are included on Academy students' transcripts. We work to help our students discover their passions and stand out. Okay, so I'm at the main Faith Lutheran website. And what I wanna show you is a little bit around this academics tab up here at the top. And so when the first thing that you drop down to is where it says curriculum. And so we kind of talked a little bit about these amazing electives, so many different courses. I think Mr. Fogos said we're up to 191 different classes our, our students can choose from. My own students are, my own children are very excited about this. So when you scroll down, you wanna click on upper school and then it'll allow you to see the different departments. And I wanna point out a few of them. So a couple of amazing opportunities our students have academically is that we offer a couple of dual credit opportunities. So we have an online dual credit program through Grand Canyon University. And so students can get both high school and college credit through taking these online courses. We also have an on-ground dual credit opportunity for students through Concordia University, where they take classes here at Faith and can get both high school and college credit. And they come out with um, college courses on a transcript to transfer in from both of these um, programs. And then we also have a new Faith Lutheran online program where students can take a number of different online courses here at Faith to allow them some flexibility in their schedule. And then you can see all of the different departments that we have. And once you click on them, and you scroll down, you see all of the different courses that are offered. When you click on the name of a course, it'll expand and it'll give you the information about that course. And you can read about all of these amazing opportunities we have. So I'm going to go back up here. Also within the academics in this long list, you can read more about our college counseling program. We have an amazing college counseling program to help students find their best fit college. And then in general, our counseling program as well. I'm going to go into where it says Honors Institute and Academies. We usually get a number of questions on this evening about our Honors Institute. And so students can qualify to apply to our Honors Institute and join that. And what the Honors Institute is, is it is one of our endorsement programs that will help guide students specifically into very highly selective programs and universities. And so you can see the qualifications and the graduation requirements that help guide students into those programs. So you can read more about that or ask us questions tonight if you have um, if you have interest in the Honors Institute. And then you can see a panel across here of all of our different academies that were mentioned in the video. So we do have a Business and Entrepreneurship Academy and a Christ Academy, a Flight Academy, a Film and Broadcasting Academy, a Hospitality and Tourism Academy, a Justice and Advocacy Academy, 
the STEM Academy and our Conservatory of the Fine Arts. I'm gonna go into one of them right now so that you can see where to find the information. When you click on an academy, you'll read about all of the different opportunities that the students have within that academy. You can see um, our internship sponsors where our students, um, where we work out internships with them. Students interns at a number of different places, not just these, but these are our internship partners. And then when you scroll down, this is some of the information that's gonna be most helpful for you if you're interested in joining one of our academies. So you'll read about the different endorsements within the academy. And when you look at it, it'll tell you the information for what you need to qualify to apply. So in the STEM Academy, um, you, we're looking at your math and science grades as well as your GPA. But some of our academies, you actually have to take a course in order to be able to apply. For example, our Business and Entrepreneurship Academy, you want to take foundations of business and then, be, then you can apply to that academy. So you want to read about what the requirements are to be able to apply and that's this information down here then to the right of that you'll see the information about the graduation requirements from that endorsement program and then um, at the bottom you'll see an email address specific to each one so that's where you can find a lot of the uh, a lot of the information regarding the specific academies i also wanted to um, go into the conservatory one a second, because I'm sure we have a number of people interested in the conservatory. When you click on the conservatory of the fine arts and you scroll down, you can see all of the different majors here that are offered and read more about those requirements there. So that's a little bit about the around the website. Um, the next thing I wanted to do is go through some frequently asked questions that we tend to get on this evening. And so um, if you're having these questions, maybe this will help um, answer those questions, or if you, um, maybe it'll get some more questions in your mind. So if you're interested in the Conservatory of the Fine Arts, we want to let you know how to get into that. So for the Conservatory, it's a little bit different than our academies, and you have to audition ahead of time. So let's just say you're in eighth grade right now, and you're interested in joining the Conservatory. So in order to join, you would need to audition January of 22. That's so January of your eighth grade year, you would audition and then be accepted and join our Conservatory right away in the fall of next year as a ninth grader. And so if you want information about auditioning for a particular major in the conservatory, make sure you email Ms. Slater. Her email's on the screen there. She is our Dean of Fine Arts. And so she'll get that information to you. The majors have different ways of auditioning. And so she'll give you the specific information that you're looking for if you want to audition to join the conservatory for next school year. So our academies, you actually don't join ahead of time. So with our academy applications, you're actually going to be a student here as a high schooler, and you can join an academy as a freshman or sophomore. And um, if you're an incoming junior, you're also welcome to join an academy. We just want to find out and help move you into that program a little bit more quickly. And so um, you would be applying in January of next year. And so, we do applications in January of ninth grade and January of 10th grade. So if you're looking to join an academy, the only thing you might want to do now is to look at any classes or activities to participate in that you would need to help qualify for an academy. So the very first frequently asked question we get is, are there multiple chances to apply? And so, yes, there are. So yes, you can apply January of your freshman year. Yes, you can apply January of your sophomore year as well. Can you change academies? Yes. So like uh, Willem and Roxy both mentioned, we are completely understanding that you guys are in middle school and high school right now, and we don't expect you to have your life mapped out, but we do want to help you explore your passions. And so if you're interested in one, we would encourage you to apply and join an academy, um, but you can switch academies. We'd encourage you to think about it and do it before 11th grade, because that's when we start helping you find an internship and place you in internships. So it just makes that a little bit easier, but you can change academies. 
Can you apply to more than one? Well, as you heard from our students, Willem and Roxy, they're definitely participating in more than one. Our students do sports at the same time. Our students do a number of different activities. Um, and we are always here to help guide you um, to balance those activities that you're really passionate about. So yes, you can. Can you drop a program later? Yes, we're not going to lock you into something that once, if you discover you're not passionate about that or you're passionate about something else, we want to help support you. So it's okay if you need to drop a program at any point. And do you need to take a specific class to get in? And that that answer is sometimes. So it depends on the endorsement program. And so you want to look at that or email us and ask us um, if you are um looking at making a schedule for next year to see if you should take a particular class to get into one of our academies. So you can look at the web pages or email me and ask me. I'm happy to answer those questions and any questions you have. So let us know in the Q&A right now if you have any questions about any of our academies that we could help answer. But if you think of any questions later after tonight, please feel free to email me. My email address is down there at blank e at flhsemail.org. And um, I think that wraps it up for me, um, unless there's some specific questions for me, Mrs. Choi. Uh, we've had a lot of great questions so far. And so parents in the Q&A box in your um, Zoom bar below, make sure to submit your questions. And Mr. Fogo has been busy in there already answering a lot of questions that parents have asked. Um, and so parents, you should be able to see those responses um, to those questions that Mr. Fogo has asked so far. I think something that I always want to clarify for families, um, a lot of, especially some of my new families ask, do my kids have to be in an academy um, if they are coming to Faith Lutheran in high school? And uh, the answer is no. Um, I think you ran the numbers recently, Mrs. Blank, as to how many students we have in our academies, right? Right. We have 300 students in our academies right now, but we have a lot more students than that in our high school. So um, yeah, there's a lot of students that take advantage of taking our courses that are specialized for academies because anybody can take the courses. You don't have to be in an academy to take them. So lots of students will take advantage of that, even if they're not in an academy. Absolutely. And uh, same with a conservatory, right? Um, do you have to be in a conservatory if you want to be in the fine arts in high school? And the answer to that is no, right? You can still take a class, take a fine arts class and participate fully in the fine arts, even if you're not specifically in the conservatory major. Um, and so I know it looks like we had a family that raised their hand. Unfortunately, this is a webinar tonight. And so if you raise your hand, I can't actually call on you to ask, ask your question, but please type your question in the Q&A box um, at the bottom of your screen. Uh, Mr. Fogo, we had earlier in the poll um, to see if um, that families were interested in hearing about some of our honors AP and dual credit classes. I wonder if you could highlight that really quickly about honors AP and then dual credit and that special relationship we have with um, Grand Canyon. Sure, we, and, and a couple other colleges too. So uh, sure. first, first off, something else about the academies that you should know is we've built real, if you haven't met on campus, we've built some incredible uh, facilities. And so we're building a flight room right now. We have a, a really awesome classroom where we do honors molecular genetics and engineering classrooms and a courtroom and a huge greenhouse to do uh, research in. And so our facilities are really incredible. I know that we have an open house this Saturday, so you're all invited. I'm sure uh, Ms. Choi will talk about that in a, in a few minutes, but uh, coming and seeing our campus really impressive. Um, we have this year, we had about 340 freshmen. So basically the 300 kids in the academy are a little bit more than a third of our sophomore through seniors. And so we probably usually have about 40% um, of our students inside of an academy. And so that's just uh, for you to understand that. And some of those are in multiple academies too. And when it comes to the levels of class that we have, we have our, if you came, if you came to Faith Lutheran and you took only classes that weren't honors or AP or dual credit, you are still in a 100% total college preparatory school. Um, and one of the things that we know is kids that transfer in from other schools, the school is, it can be difficult, right? Um, our passion is preparing you for college. If that's true, then um, we are, we're gonna really work hard at that. Our mission is everyone prepared, everyone saved. And that is what drives us every day. It was what gets me excited every morning when I wake up in the morning is that uh, you know, we have a really sweet mission and we're gonna pursue that as an organization every day. So we hope you love that too, because our, our, it's really our passion. Then if you're gonna take honors courses, 
Honors courses are a step above that. Those all go into transcript um, and they tend to have a little bit more homework, be a little bit more challenging. Um, and there's a wide span of them. I believe that um, giftedness is more than just math and science. And so we have honors choir and we have honors dance classes and we have honors theater classes. Those are all tougher. They all take more time and they all take giftedness that, that are as maybe outside what a normal kid uh, can, can accomplish. And so that's an honors class. And then AP, most of you guys know what AP is. It's called advanced placement. And it's the most rigorous high school classes in the country. And then you take a test in the spring uh, to, to get college credit. If you pass that with a three, four or five, some schools only fours and fives, but some schools three, fours and fives, you actually get college credit. And they, those are the most challenging classes. They have the most homework um, and the teachers really have to drive the kids. They also look best on a transcript, right? And so you have all those kind of things. If you're competing against the best students in the country, they're often gonna have AP classes on their transcript. My advice to you is take AP classes and what you enjoy and what you're good at. The colleges do not need to see 10 of them they say a kid that takes three or four proves to us, this is Harvard speaking, you know, those kind of, if they take three or four and they do well in them, that demonstrates that they're a really good student and they can handle our level of academics. They don't need to take 10 or 12 of them. And, and their word they use is, we do not want high school to be a drudgery. Uh, they don't want kids mired at home doing you know, six hours of homework every night. That's not what they want from you. So take the AP classes that you're interested in, that you're talented in, and prove to the college that you do that level of work if, if you want to, if you're that kind of student. Most of our students do not take AP courses. So please kind of put that in, inside your mind too. Um, but most of the kids do not take AP courses or maybe they take one in their favorite, their favorite subject. And then something called dual credit. I think most of you guys have heard of this by now. Colleges have started um, offering classes with our teachers. So we teach our teachers, teach classes that offer dual credit and so they get credit in high school and they get credit in college. And because it's a college credit, most of the time that transfers to many other colleges. So we have uh, dual credit courses with Concordia in Nebraska, Concordia in Wisconsin that you take online and GCU, uh, Grand Canyon University, um, where, where I think there's online classes uh, for that too. And so we offer quite a few courses uh, where kids can get dual credit. What does that mean for you? They get in, in, inside their normal four years of high school, if they're taking AP classes or they're taking dual credit classes, they can actually wipe out uh, maybe a year of their college uh, saving a lot of money. For example, my son, uh, if he would have chose to go to Tulane, the total bill there would have been $76,000. Uh, a year. So wiping out a year of that would have been a positive. He, he decided not to, to do that, um, but uh, that's, that's how much some colleges can cost. And so kids at Faith can wipe out uh, college, college years or semesters by the type of classes they take. Very nice. Thank you, Mr. Fogo. All right, parents, um, we have um, on our panel tonight, along with Mr. Fogo, Mrs. Blank and myself, we still have Roxy, our student, um, as well as Mr. Herbie Walker, who's one of our um, new admin here at the school, as well as um, head of our college counseling department. Um, and so Mr. Walker is also able to answer your questions um, in the Q&A and in the chat. Um, but I do want to highlight some of these just in case um, some of our families can't view the chat box, especially for our viewers in um, that are viewing our uh, webinar on Facebook Live. Um, we had a great question about service hours. Um, something that I love about our high school program is that we do ask students every year to submit service hours. And they have a required amount of 20 hours a year that students can um, take care of with various nonprofits and organizations. But many of our students go above and beyond that. And so students are um, able to record their service hours. And yes, it will be shown on their transcripts um, so that colleges can see when they graduate. Um, but ultimately, many of our students end up doing above and beyond the amount of required of service hours every year because of the fact that 
They um, have the ability to do them over their key club with National Honor Society um, and through various other organizations and honors groups. And so lots of service hours. They can start um, the summer before they start high school. I think the time frame is usually from June to May. And so um, that was a great question. Um, but another one that I want to make sure I highlight um, is the fact, um, I know a lot of parents usually ask about homework amounts in high school. It definitely varies um, and it depends on um, what classes your students are taking, um, but every student is different. Um, we like to say at least an hour and a half, but some students have, you know, three hours of homework. And so it really does depend on the classes that they take. But I would say, Roxy, you're a student right now. Um, really quickly, are you taking honors and AP classes? Um, yeah, I'm taking um i'm taking two honors this year and four ap's wow okay so now on average how much homework do you think you could say you have a night <laughs> <laughs> um it really depends because one of my ap's is double block so i have ap bio every day so okay. sometimes that can add up i feel like a lot of the time my homework doesn't come from homework but more studying for tests and quizzes and exams because classes like obviously my math class gives homework every day and but most of the time and like history will give sometimes reading assignments, but it's mainly the homework comes from having to put, put time aside to memorize what you're learning or understand what you're learning and studying for the quizzes and the tests. But there's definitely a large amount of homework that comes with it still, like writing essays for AP English and stuff like that. So there's still absolutely. You know, yeah, I think that's something that Mr. Fogel usually highlights. He didn't say this yet tonight, but something that he thinks is most important for students as they prepare for our high school in particular is learning how to be organized and how to organize your time. So not only organizing your work and your responsibilities, but how you organize your time and when you do those certain things helps a student become really successful in high school. Um, we well, have about hey, five Mike, minutes. Mike, oh, I sure, think, sure. What, one of the things I would say is there are schools out there that really believe in just loading on the homework, and that's not mm -hmm. really our school. If you're going to take a load like um, some of our top students, say like four APs and two honor classes, it's, it's really hard. You're going to have quite a bit of homework, um, but it's not a typical for a student to take that, and it's also not typical for them to have six hours of homework in a night or something like that. Uh, our students go to college and do really well. And we are told that over and over again, I call it the magic sauce. And I think the magic sauce is that our, our academics are fairly hard, but our kids are active. And so what a, a student like the two panelists today, they're, they're handling those hard classes, but they're also able to be in the conservatory and be in plays. They're able to do model UN, they're able to do that. And it's that, I think they're learning how to balance their time we have homework, we have activities, uh, we have our family responsibilities and learning to balance that in high school. In college, you don't have enough, you don't, you can't get enough homework to fill your time unless you're, <laughs> unless you're working a lot too, unless you have a job and you're working a lot. And so I think them learning how to balance their time and prioritizing is really important. Absolutely, absolutely. I was going to say, we just have a few minutes until 7 p.m. We want to make sure we respect everyone's time um, and make sure parents, you know, we have probably time for about two more questions. If you have a chance, remember, we also have our college uh, counseling uh, director here with us tonight as well. Um, a quick, just general question about high school for Monica. How early do classes start in high school? Do you have early bird classes? So our class day in the high school starts at 740 in the morning 45. and ends at 2 four. Oh, sorry, 45. Well, first bell, Mr. Fogo, we want to make sure they get to class early, right? Five minutes early is on time. I'm just teasing. But yes, 7.45 uh, is when school starts. And then um, 2.40 in the afternoon is when we end. And that's on a typical day. We do have one day in the week where we do a late start and students start at 8.40 in the morning. Um, and we do not currently have too many early bird classes, but uh, we do have jazz band that's an early bird class, uh, I think. I can't think of any other early bird classes, Mr. Fogo. We, we do have, we also have a few night classes too. And so oh, yes. like, for example, we have a mock trial uh, not, uh, night class and we have Cyber Patriot night class. Um, and so there are a few night classes too. Absolutely, absolutely. 
And then it looks like we have a few more questions and I'm just gonna really rattle these off real quick. Is there a sample schedule that parents can obtain? I think that that is a great question because when you have a curriculum of over 190 classes, it can be a little overwhelming. Um, and so you can break it down this way. Um, there are five classes that are core classes for every high school student at Faith Lutheran, math, science, English, history, and for us, theology or your faith class. And then the other three are electives. And those electives, um, some of them are required and some of them are optional for the student to choose and decide. Um, and so we have computer science elective that's required, uh, a PE one that's required as well as languages. Uh, and so that's a simple breakdown of it. Um, but a sample schedule, that is something that if you email our admissions office, we'd be happy to provide one for you or to help break it down for you. Um, and then lastly, for a parent, this is a great question. Will there be shadow days? And so I'm gonna be a little bit Selfish here, Mr. Fogo, and end the night promoting a few admissions things, if that's okay with you. <laughs> and so shadow days for high school students. Um, we have a limited amount of shadow days this year. And so if you are interested in doing a shadow, uh, meaning you get to actually have your student come on campus and sit inside a class, please email our admissions office at admissions at flhs email.org. Um, we'll make sure to send you that information. Um, and you could visit that information on our website as well. Um, there are also um, opportunities on our website uh, to sign up for campus tours, but at the uh, the most exciting event that would happen uh, extremely fast is actually this Saturday. We have a mini open house happening this Saturday, uh, November, oh gosh, I'm forgetting the date, November 13th, um, and it's from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Uh, for some of our new families that are just applying to Faith Lutheran, this is your opportunity to walk around at your leisure, to view our campus, and get your eyes on some of these really great areas that Roxy and Willem and Mr. Fogo and Mrs. Blank have all talked about, from our studio to our courtroom, uh, our greenhouse, as well as our, our amazing theater, and our flight classroom. Um, and so if you are able to make it, it's this Saturday from 9 to 11. You can register online to let us know you're coming. Um, for our current families, we just had two years of COVID where maybe you started the school and you didn't get a great chance to actually get eyes in the classrooms that your students are in. And so current families at Faith Lutheran, you're invited to come as well. Um, and so, Mr. Fogo, do you have any closing thoughts for us tonight as we wrap up the evening? Nope, nope. We're, ex we're excited uh, about our student body this year. We think our student body is amazing and we're really looking forward to you guys uh, would join in uh, what we think is very special place. But uh, one more time, I wanna tell you, the most important thing about our school is your kids are gonna come here and feel loved and supported. They're gonna be safe. There's a lot of things that people choose their high school by. Um, and we're really committed to, I think, doing all that. And, and the, the most important thing is you have teachers who care about you and that, and Teachers that care about you also spend a lot of time with kids, helping them, supporting them, uh, preparing lessons, all those things that are important is what we value most. And so we, we hope you agree and we hope you apply if, you're, if you haven't already. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much. Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining us on our webinar tonight. Um, if this recording goes successfully and we don't have any uh, technical difficulties, we are hoping to post this uh, as well if you need to review. Um, but thank you so much. And Mr. Dwyer actually just put um, some information in the chat for you to see uh, information about our events and how to contact us. Um, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And we hope that you have a wonderful night. God bless.